How? Oh, I'm not going to know when we start. Oh, hey, we're live. <laughs> that was good timing. Huh? We're live. We're, we're live, like, live? We're like live, live. Like on the things? On the thing. No hey, guys. The things. Hey, how are you guys doing? Phil left for the week, uh, so yeah. we had to figure out how to do the lives. And which we're not you all would, that great at it. No. Clearly. You would think we just like hold up a cell phone. There's like computers and like mics. Computers and, and live things. I had to plug in a lot of stuff. Yeah, and um, we had to like take pictures. Phil took us through it all. We took pictures, video, a couple of videos, and we had to reference those. And Phil should be happy because we were actually both here in the room on time. On time. In fact, early. Yes. Even. So. It only took me like 17 minutes to set up everything after all my practice. You're live. <laughs> Thanks, you Dave to, Workman. You're the best. And you get your computer here, and yeah, Phil's Phil is not here to yell at you. So public service announcement: I'll only be here for like the next five minutes. We have a a guest coming we to visit. We have a special guest. But he got stuck in traffic. One of our members so wanted to come in and talk about We have about tiny guns. Things. We have tiny guns Wait. and we have big ones. Yeah, give me that. It's like as tall as I am. Yes. Look at this, guys. They, they can't see because you have, but the I have thing to see in them. there. Oh, hey, this is what I got. But see, that's the it's thing. It's like, it's so tall that when I set it up here, they're not even going to be able to see like anything more than like the scope. No. No, it's like way up to the high. Yeah, but it's pretty. But look, this little baby one is like, could fit inside of it. Now he took my laptop You could put away. a gun on a gun. Literally. Wait a I think somebody already did that and it failed miserably. Yeah. But show them your new site on that thing. Yeah, so we also figured out, so this is the new MPX. Um, this is their, I believe it's a four inch barrel version. It's a little bit bigger. Um, I don't know how much bigger you can call it necessarily over their copperheads and, and so forth. But if you flip it over, bam, and you just look down this way, we do have a clear weapon, guys. Um, you can use that and just put your face right there, and then you can just perfect. Do the things. I need the thing back. You need the things back. You took my thing away. Yeah. Um, so really cool, a uh, little MPX nine millimeter pistol carbine. It is technically a pistol in this configuration. Uh, does have the Sweet little SIG brace on the back, um, little collapsible guy, and he rotates around so you can <laughs> put your arm in there somehow. Um, well, I don't know. I do. I don't do those. It, it's a thing. So it does the thing, and it's uh, it's interesting. One second, Dave Workman. I'll turn it up. But it is awesome. Um, Fun little gun to shoot. They come in a variety of different sizes. This one is their pistol caliber uh, or the pistol model. So it's a little munchkin dude. And then uh, we do have the 16 inch variation like we gave away at the Spartan 300 match. Uh, so, what are you saying? It's like Dave said our volume was a little low, so I had to go fix it. Well, is, is it that better, better now? Dave? He said we yeah, were faint, that's... and we're not exactly if faint it's, people. If it's loud enough, we need a dad joke or two. Yes. So uh, also, iPro is not required, but my new my sponsor, our sponsor, team sponsor, whatever, sent us all iPro. So I'm yes, just... we got iPro. Uh, we got all kinds of goodies right now. Uh, uh, same guy from Proper. Yeah. We all got our choice of bag, some pants, hats, patches, glow in the dark wrist bracelets. Which are the coolest things? They the are super slap cool. bracelets. Um, um, Ron needs to be like, we need to has them here. And I know that's a Ron thing. Sid's here! I think our, our guest is here. Sid's here! Sid's here! Okay, I'm gonna All go right. away now. We're gonna boot you. I get to escape. I can't get. wait. Get! I'm taking the rifle with me. Yeah, but you gotta leave the microphone. I'll give Sid the microphone if you give me a minute. Come on in, Sid! Isn't it awesome? Which one? This one or the big one? Yeah, the Tom Thompson Toys. Center. <laughs> <laughs> and now Sid's happy. Welcome, Sid. Look at that. Thank you. You can play. No, we don't want to take it home. Exactly. That's but why. It's I not I 40 See, or it's so much easier for me to get people to want to take stuff home if I can just get them to play with it. Just, <laughs> it's cool to play with stuff here at the range. We like you to play with stuff. Oh my goodness. Especially because then you want to take it home. It's all awesome. gorgeous. Chambered in nine millimeter. Yes. It would be a perfect addition to your repertoire. I have one. Slender. Little bigger. Not that one, I got the, the MPX. So you got the full size. Yeah. So you need the munchkin. It's like a little brother. 
<laughs> you need a little brother, and that way you can have, you know, because you need a primary and a secondary, right? That is true. That so is your primary could be the bigger one, and then your secondary could be the smaller one, and then in case you were needing to do other things, you could make this your primary and the long one the secondary. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Or his and hers, or <laughs> his and his. But <laughs> what'll happen is my mom will see this thing. <laughs> <laughs> and then she'll want one. If so, you six moms, she will want one. You'll yeah. lose that one to her, and then we'll get you another one. Yeah. We do have a black one out there, too. We could do a black and brown, <laughs> and you could have a, you could have like twinsies. This is tempting. Right. Very tempting. Um, you guys take kidneys? Uh, I think Sam's working on a thing, or maybe that's a Phil thing. I'm not sure. I'll see what I can do. Speaking of kidney things, we do have the, te the teacher trauma course. Um, I know that we had somebody on Facebook that said, yeah, it's $200 for the free class. Yes, if you want to take the teacher's free class and you want to somehow swindle your way into it, for $200, we might pretend you're a teacher. Although we will probably just reschedule you for another class that is not for teachers. Um, this one is geared towards teachers though, and it is free for all teachers. So if you know a teacher and you think they need to be in that, it is on Monday. So shoot an email in to phil at therangestl.com. Let him know and uh, we will get you all the coupon codes that you need to get the $200 class for free. Um, again, it is free for all teachers, uh, but in order to keep anybody from signing up, for a free class, it does have a $200 price tag on it currently. But, get a hold of us, like I said, we will swap it over. Uh, we also got Shotgun 2 coming up on Tuesday. Um, and big one for next weekend is the USMC, the Marine Corps Charity Match is next Saturday. There are still a couple of spots open to that. There's only 50 slots gonna be available for that. Uh, I believe they're giving away, what a night, they, they've got raffles going on for a 19X, 19X and Daily Defense, Daily Defense uh, DDM4, or B7, I don't remember which one it is, but. Yeah, there are pictures of it I have posted, that's all I know. Sam's got some pictures up there, it's awesome. Um, and they are doing, I think, what is it, Heisel will be here as well. They have their whole line of like single shot caliber, like rifle caliber pistol things. Totally weird. You should totally check it out, Sid. I might have to do that. It's about yay big. It'll like fit in a pocket, and they have all kinds of cool chamberings like 223, 762 by 39. Um, and I think. Oh, that thing you had your dealer yeah, the, yeah, like just a simple barrel. It's a single shot. It's. Oh, it's. They look like way fun. So they'll have them out here. I believe they're even going to be able to shoot them as well so even if you don't want to shoot the match come out check out the vendors that'll be here um i know the marine corps they they always have a good group of dudes that are here and, uh, if you want to come lots watch. of fun they got i believe food will be here as well and they got all kinds of goodies going on so come in come watch uh sign up preferably because shooting a match is always fun um i've never done one why i don't know i mean and that, that you're one of those guys that you're in here all the time what is it what is it that keeps you from shooting a match? I don't really know. Just He'd have to take off his beautiful fancy clothes because he wears gorgeous outfits to the range with his fancy watch. He threatened to wear a suit and tie, and I was like, dude, you make, like <laughs> you make me look like a slob. I didn't know. Make me look like a slob. Yeah, but hey. I yeah, didn't know. So I begged him not to wear a, a shirt. And tie I've never done a match. That. I might. You should have like a fur coat or something. I no. I did the um. <laughs> I did do a guys and guns uh, night, and that was a ball. It was awesome. I and I really enjoyed it. Um, I sent my mom to a girls and guns night. <laughs> I've know. recommended people to come out here and do it because it, it was. It was money well spent. I enjoyed myself um, with other people that, that you know, like shooting. And who was here that night? I think it was uh, a brewery that was here that night. Uh, it was a big 92. That would have been, no, it would have no. been Ben with um, Kirkwood Station. Kirkwood Station. Whoever okay. it was, oh my God. Because they had the coffee here. 
We always get a good group. So the next one will be in July, and we've got uh, STL Cigars will be out here. Oh. So it'll be hand rolling cigars. Um, Scott's an awesome dude. I mean, he's gone cool. down to uh, I think Dominican Republic, Cuba. Like he's gone all over the place, and he actually has his own uh, tobacco that's grown. So it's grown specifically for him, and then shipped up to him and. Oh, that's awesome. and all that stuff up to his little status um, right here in St. St. Louis. So um, that's awesome. awesome guy. So he'll be hand rolling cigars um, and he'll have all kinds of different. He's got tons you, of knowledge on cigars. You just mentioned there. cigars, so I'll be there. Yeah, uh, we got axe throwing. So we'll have the St. Louis axe throwing again. Um, we'll have, I think, Pickney Bend will be here. Yeah, will be here. Whiskeys and, and stuff. He's bringing it all. Whiskey, um, gin, vodka, corn. Yeah, he wants, to, he wants to bring all the things. So. He wants to oh, my. Yeah. Plus, Usually we'll have a host of full autos oh, and, yeah. and that stuff from. So uh, that'll definitely be a, a fun night. I have to put that on my calendar. Yeah, mm -hmm. so tons of fun. That's in, Jan in July. We have girls who just want to have guns, like, like you mentioned, you, you sent your mom to. It's it, it, our number one event, it sells out just about every month, with the exception of this month. Who's decided to go to the Stanley Cup? Oh, and we got more people. Oh, we got. Hey! I had a good time to sit. <laughs> yeah! I know Sid was here. I didn't, we have I, a hand now. I, I, I feel special. Well, one of us has to go to work, so. Oh, anyway. But I just had to sit. Yeah. Say hi to this face. I used the face things stuff. The face tubes. Skynet. Stuff. <laughs> Skynet. Things. Skynet. Skynet. You said you know, name two more times, they show up. Well, it's Vinny like said it once, so next they're already after your oh, dogs. Stop. Hide they're your dogs. dogs. They're real cute dogs, guys. Yes. Dogs are the All best. All cuteness. They go the well with the, the mustache. Yeah, okay, so guys, is She's it coming in nicely? You guys quite. can lie to me and say yes. I know it's coming in real bad. <laughs> But lighting it makes me feel way better about myself. It looks pretty amazing. It's way better than it's the growing. Face right now. Yeah, he's a dirty oh, skin. Oh player. man, Phil, Phil did the thing that like. But in that mustache that he get like that weird looking like. Ooh, yeah, that was pretty bars, cool. That was, yeah, that was cool when he that was ended something. up shaving it. And gave it what did he say? He he had an accident with his. He's, I think yeah. he like got different guards on his trimmer, or he got different trimmer, different guards, and like they weren't there like the right. What I don't know. It's something with the rotation of the Earth and what? solar spots and gravitational basic pull geometry. of the Death Star. <laughs> like basic economics. I don't understand. You know. Wow. <laughs> basic so, economics. I just see all the math. All about the geometry. All about. Be glad when it grows back. And the geology. Yeah. That's a study of rocks. I found that out. Learning things, guys. Learning things. All right. All right. All right. Well, thanks for stopping by, Cam, and that amazing mustache of yours. He kept coming here and said hi to Sid, and I was like, Sid's not going to see it, so you might as well just come say hi. I didn't think you would actually come say hi. I'm yeah, glad that he did. Is it a little weird to be on this side of the, the camera? Yeah, because I'm normally at home or on my phone, and but now it's, away it's and cool being here. Yeah. And we oh, got another guest. And a Vinny. <laughs> and a Vinny. Yeah, <laughs> We don't ever have people come in and hang out, and then Sid comes he in and like, or by come and hang out. <laughs> talked about. You can't has it. Why not? I don't know why she put it way over there. Because it was literally like, locking. Sid out. didn't it's, even get to see it's the rifle. It's beautiful. And, I see it but, from over here. Oh my God! You can't miss it. It's something you, like you got to put the paws on it. God, man! Look at that. Mm. Oh my goodness! Yes. Look at that. So this is. We, we have all kinds of goodies that are always here. We have all kinds of goodies that we can get in here. So we got Vinny's uh, Thompson Center. Uh, oh my Thompson God. Thompson Center arms, arms in conjunction, with, in the conjunction with the Smith & Wesson Performance Center. Um, chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor. Just beautiful. Yeah. Topped off with the uh, Vortex Razor 5x20. This is gorgeous. Mm. It is very nice. We don't know how it shoots yet, do we, though, Vinny? Not yet. His Not yet. My mod comes in today. Just oh got here. God. Putting it all together. Got the scope mounted yesterday. Bipod's here. He's coming in yeah. today. And then he'll be able to play with it. This is beautiful, sir. It's a bit much for our 25 yard range, but. Uh, Debatable. Oh. It, I guarantee it'll still be yeah. used in the bays downstairs. 
So 6.5 Creedmoor, if those that uh, may have been living under a rock that don't have any idea what that is, it is a round that is basically built to run 1,500 awesome. yards or with no problems. Um, Sam was shooting at 1,100 yards uh, at SHOT Show. 35 mile power wind. 35 mile hour side winds. Like it was, a, it, it was a crazy day and she's blinging steel at a thousand plus and was surprised that we were actually telling her good job because it, it was hard yeah, to achieve. It. Yeah, and then she started paying attention. It was like, wait a yeah. minute. That's like, what was it, a quarter mile? Half mile? Something like this. I was right over at the far Yeah, so right a little over half mile. It, yeah. Yeah, so. So I think 15 is a mile. I think yeah. that's correct. 5,280, 5 by 3. I don't know people do all those holds and all the math and stuff, though. That was cool. That was cool. Dude, it's incredible. Yeah, so you were playing with the Horus reticle. Um, and so that thing is an absolute mess of numbers and jumbled Who's up stuff I, in there. Who's and it was all over. Who's that I actually played with that I actually liked? Uh, that was a new Crimson Trace. Yeah, the Crimson Trace. New Crimson Trace one, and uh, they got some really cool stuff for being a laser company. Like, they're jumping into the scope market, and I don't know if you've seen wow. that stuff, but really nice glass, um, really well thought out reticle designs. Um, they've got some simple ones that are just more of your simple crosshairs with delineations going down, and then you got the chaos of all the info. Um, it, an idiot like me, I got no idea what any of that stuff does. I know that it's all in measurements and stuff, but whether you're talking MOA, mill radians, uh, like, I don't know, stuff gets really confusing. There's a lot of math, and when I shoot, I don't necessarily like to do the math. So, and I think longest I've shot, other than being at SHOT Show, which is kind of one of them, you just sit down behind an Accuracy International rifle that's been dialed in, and then just go put the crosshairs on the left side of the target. We got a little bit of extra wind. Hang on the left-hand side, and then just press trigger. Same. So as long as you're breaking that trigger cleanly to the <laughs> rear, not disturbing everything while it's going on, it pretty much does itself, um, does everything for you. So other than that, 600 yards is about the farthest I've gone on just me actually being in charge of pulling triggers and and lining stuff up and man it gets it gets lost and confusing and all that it stuff. does it does um had some rifle experience overseas i'm not gonna get in too much of it but um it is a lot of math yeah and if you don't do it right and you end up sending more than one round and now they don't that's not are, good no no so so one one shot and then one in effect. Mm -hmm. Just say it that way. One 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 shot, one effect, and then no more. That way, right. it's like, where'd that come from? Mm -hmm. um, I have no idea where that came from. And a lot of them guys are pretty good at Damn. not being there. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're not. That's their job to not be there. <laughs> they're not at, and they're very difficult to find where they're not at. Right. So. Yeah, if we can keep those guys, I mean, man, that I can't really talk about here. Right. We'll talk <laughs> about it later. But there are some pretty neat stories about some neat things happening at very far distances that mm -hmm. those guys do a lot more math than I do. A lot of it. Yeah. Everything down to like taking the mags out of the rifle and sitting them in the sun mm -hmm. because that changes enough of what happens to the powders and so forth exactly. and you can you can change numbers by pretty big distances from what i understand it, and i guess when you're talking about There's a lot of tricks in the trade 2000 yards like mm -hmm. the longest shot now is up to like what almost five miles five plus miles i heard that it's ridiculous guy had That's... enough time to squeeze off one round nonchalantly wreck that round out wreck a new round in, dials back in, squeezes off the second round, and then the first round has an impact. That's crazy. 17 seconds worth of hang time. Well, there's some people out here that just train, 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 yeah, train, train. Yeah, I mean, it, it's some neat stuff going on right mm -hmm. now. It's, it's neat because it's, it's rolling back into the average everyday shooters and the average everyday guns because the guns and what they're learning on all of these extremes is little refinements that they can make to the average everyday gun 
that mm -hmm. just makes the reliability, the accuracy, and so forth. I mean, it's not uncommon to get a car now from just about, okay, we'll say a majority of people that is shooting inside of one inch with good, good ammo. And that's not something that was normal six, seven years ago, no. um, let alone 10, 15 years ago. And we've still got the battle between 5.56 five, and 2.23 and that sort of thing on the AR platform, but everybody's building stuff that it doesn't matter what you throw into. Exactly. It'll handle the pressures of the 5.56, five, it'll handle the accuracy of the 2.23 and a beautiful melding. And we've got a lot of weird rounds out there that we're doing a lot of stuff. It's kind of neat. Lots yes. of fun stuff. Um, we also got some weird stuff happening. Like, did you hear about the, the armed vet that uh, decided to shoot up the courthouse? I saw that on the news and... Something seems a little off on that. Conveniently, there was a photographer there that was able to capture it right off the bat. Yeah, yeah the, the footage unusual. and the angle he had up. And I'm like, wait a minute. Whoa, how did he... Yeah. They showed him coming out with all the gear on and everything and i'm like okay yeah you did that from your phone and there's no like i didn't hear any shot report I didn't see anybody else shooting at him but you know he was He's, they dropped him i don't know it's very odd and then very right odd. after that we've got the uh the marine um that tried to get on the base with Quote, lots of guns. He had uh, two two rifles, a pistol, a suppressor, a bump stock. So now oh. he had a machine gun. Um, I'm sure that wasn't registered since you can't register a new machine gun. And then body armor and ammunition. Something seems a little weird on that whole situation. Fishy. And uh, I guess there's a, a bulletin that had been issued right before that from the Nebraska saying that he had mentioned to another Marine he was going to, quote, shoot up the battalion starting at the barracks over some misconduct. And there's, there's something weird, and I find it a little odd that we've got, like, bang, bang, bang happening because the last couple of these mass shooters and so forth are all completely opposite the normal talking points that some have used as to why we need to get rid of guns. All of a sudden, now we have these two that are like this. Very disturbing. There's something seems a little odd about that, but. Awkward and disturbing. Maybe it's just some twisted people out there. And, and I think that kind of brings that us is in. true. What we were talking about the other day is why, why you're here so often, you know, and to make sure I stay proficient. <clears throat> the Second Amendment is a right, but it's also a responsibility. Correct. And if you're not responsible with it, i.e. in the keeping of the firearm and also being able to use it, then you're detrimental to yourself and society. You need to right. train. Yeah. And a lot of my friends say, man, you're always at the range. You're always at the range. I enjoy shooting. I enjoy being around other people that shoot and are responsible just like me. Yeah. So. You end up getting in some really good conversations with those people. Yes. Uh, and, and you find that there's more people in that community. And, and this is we find a lot of new to the community people. Mm -hmm. And the community as a whole. I mean, it's, it's huge. Um, and it keeps growing, which I think is awesome. It is. Keep bringing in more different types of people, I mm -hmm. guess. Is, I mean, you've got all types of people that are coming into it. Some that are coming into it with some prior history. Mm -hmm. uh, grandpa took me out shooting right. when I was a kid, or, you know, my dad had firearms, or, you know, I've always been around them, all the way up to I've never been around guns, they've always scared me, you know. Mm -hmm. And I just, I see the things that are happening around, and I don't know what to do, and I kind of think that maybe I should know a little bit about them. And you get all those types of people that are all coming in, and, and one of the things that I noticed, I've been in sports for a long time in a lot of different sports, the shooting community uh, and the sh shooting sports, very open. you got the top guys in the world that'll step down without getting paid, without having any kind of kickback, and talk to the lowest guy and the brand new yep. shooter and say, Here's some things, here's some tips, here's something I noticed that you did that mm -hmm. if you did it this way, it'd be a lot better. 
Absolutely. And, and so, like I'm saying, when we are carrying a firearm, it is a dangerous tool. Mm -hmm. And it can be used for very uh, incorrect. It can be used so incorrectly. It can be used incorrectly. And at the same time, the vast majority of them don't get used very often at all. Unfortunately. And that's kind of a bad thing and a good thing. Yeah. Uh, the good thing, yeah, there's going to be a lot of guns out there for a long time. They're still in great shape. So it's great for the collector or a future purchaser. Mm -hmm. um, but I think like what you're saying, and use them. Become proficient and then stay proficient. Exactly. Um, just because you shoot once or twice a year does not make you a great shooter. No. You no. understand how things work, mm -hmm. but... It's, there are people that have come here that repeatedly that I've seen shoot that are not great shooters. No. If you don't have the basics and the mechanics down, you can stay downstairs forever in a day. But it took, just like this place for example, I was mediocre. I'm still mediocre, but I'm a lot oh, better. Than, I'm a lot better than what I was <laughs> because guy. I came here. I knew, you know, pistols weren't my strong. So I came here to learn. I took a handgun course and I kept coming back and I've got so so you took the, one of the classes and, mm -hmm. and here what did you take from that class what was kind of the I had still sticks out the patience the line of sight and taking the patience to take the shot it's not necessarily you know Bang, bang, bang. You know, it's, it's the taking the time to line it up, to feel comfortable and confident pulling the trigger. That way, you know, you're responsible for that round the moment it leaves the firearm to the moment yeah. that's... So I want to make sure that I stay proficient, that if, God forbid, it comes down to it, I want to make sure that whatever I'm aiming at, I hit that and that alone. And, and that's no. being responsible. Yeah. That's being a responsible shooter. Yeah. And this is a great place to learn this. Awesome. Love and then you have awesome staff that lets you come in and sit in on a video. <laughs> <laughs> well, we appreciate it. I mean, and, and it's guys like you that keep us excited about coming in. And I, I mean, Phil, Phil is slammed with work. Um, <sighs> Phil is awesome. And it's all in trying to set up what is the best training methods. Mm -hmm. What are the best? What are new things that we can incorporate into training? What are new classes that people are needing? And very good about listening to the students of saying, hey, you know, this is something that I, I don't understand quite, and I'd like to get a little more. And sometimes it comes from a totally different angle that you never thought about. True. And it can be something that's very simple that could be either slipped into an existing class or um, like one of the things that he figured out recently is we had some students that were coming through that they were going through the basic pistol and then getting into defensive one and yet where those are designed to be one step, two step, mm -hmm. they they're were finding a big, into the... big missing component there where it, it wasn't that they were not quite, they had taken basic, mm -hmm. but there were some things that they were missing in the class that made it very difficult in the defensive pistol Gotcha. And it, it was a it was a missing link there, and he's looking through it. And after hearing from a couple of different students that here's an issue and here's a thing that we feel like we would like, we brought out intermediate. And so there you go. Phil goes through and, and and he's very good at figuring those things out and working through them and figuring out how we as a company can get better at training people so that they are proficient, that, that we do have somebody that comes in and says, well, I know that I'm not necessarily good with a pistol. I need to learn a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then instill something there that triggers you to be, uh, a, you're here multiple times a week, just about every week. Right. And it's unusual when we don't see, it. it's like, well, you know, where's Sid been? We've got a couple of different guys like Unless that. Unless I'm out of like, town or, you know. Where, where you at? And then you come in, it's like, well, I was out of town. But one thing I will say about this place, you know, there's a reason why it's number one in Missouri. Which we just got named number one in Missouri again for and you And it's so. rightfully so. You can walk in here and any member of the staff, if you have a question, they will take the time out 
to explain whatever it is that needs to be explained or if it's something that you're looking for, they will help you out. It's not just pushing sales, it's just making sure that you are comfortable, one, you know all the information that's out there, what's available for you, and trying to help, you know, put you where you need to be so that you can do what you need to do. That says a lot, and it's not just always trying to push something off on somebody, it's the actual attitude of caring to mm -hmm. help you do what you need to do. That's great, man. If you don't have a great staff, then... Yeah, we. I feel we have a oh, phenomenal staff here. The staff here is awesome. I've been to other ranges, and there's a reason why you keep seeing me here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not knocking anybody else, but there's a reason why I come here. And I love this place. Yeah, well, we appreciate it. I mean, and I'm not getting paid for this or anything like that. It's just, it's just being honest. You know, this is a great place to learn. This is a great, great place to shoot. Um, if you just want to learn something or hang around other great minds, you know, that are in the community, this is a place to be. Yeah, you don't have to come in and spend any money. Um, obviously, we won't turn away your money most of the time. Um, which we do reserve the right to turn away people's money. Sorry, uh, if we don't feel, if our guys don't feel comfortable in a situation that may transpire with a purchase or, or otherwise, we're not gonna let you shoot. Uh, we're not gonna let you buy the thing. Um, I'm sure there's some places out there that you can go and you can do that, but it's not uncommon for us to go and grab somebody else and say, hey, I'm just not sure, can you look into this and, and go and we'll send somebody else over to kind of feel them out and see, mm -hmm. is there something beyond here? Um, you know, and I know there's been a couple of things that had happened prior to me coming over here that I was told when I came over here, <coughs> situations where things didn't quite seem right. Um, and there were steps that were taken that ultimately led to an extremely good outcome in those a aspects because someone took the time to say, something about this doesn't feel right. I need to get somebody else in there. Um, there's times where purchases have not been made um, and things did not That's, happen that were being planned by parties. Um, everybody has a responsibility to do the right thing. Yeah. And, I, as a patron, have a, has a responsibility to make sure I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing and abiding by the law, and you guys have to abide by the law as well. Yeah. So if there's times where you have to say no, you just have to say no. Yeah. It's not that you're not liked <laughs> or anything like exactly. that. It's the law. Yeah. Everybody has to abide by it. Yeah no exceptions yeah and in easier situations like that I mean you got the the new const or Missouri law that says that marijuana is legal okay and there's a lot of different states that say that <sighs> okay whether you agree or disagree with that the unfortunate part for us is that even if it, you know we're, we're caught in a, a catch-22 because the federal yes. law says so when you fill out that 4473, one of the questions on there asks, are you a user, um, in a nutshell, are you a user of, the, of an illegal substance uh -huh. like marijuana? That's not state specific, it's a federal form. It's the federal law Correct. that says that it is illegal. So regardless of what is or is not state legal, it is not legal. So you have two choices. You either answer truthfully <laughs> and say yes and no gun, or you lie and say no and uh, sir, I can smell it. Right. No gun. So it's not something that we individually have any yay or nay on. It's still the federal government. They still have the rules there. And so there's times that you, you know, but you don't have to come in to roll back. You don't have to come in and spend money. Come in and get information. Um, we want you to be educated. We want you to be able to do the right thing. Whether that Become be a member. one or another, we want you to purchase the right thing if you're gonna purchase. Um, membership is awesome. Mm -hmm. If you have any intention of actually using this place in any regularity, Membership's got huge benefits for cost savings. Yes. Um, it also has big benefits for the, all the freebies. Mm -hmm. um, shirts, free lanes, free ammo, free perks, extra discounts. 
I mean, there's a lot to it. Class. I remember Classes. the guy came in um, that was a lawyer and spoke to people in reference to, you know, what your rights were and what you should do in case, God forbid, you have to pull the trigger. I forgot his name. That was a free class that was offered to members. Chris, uh, Chris Cox. Yeah. yeah. That was a free class that was offered to members. Yeah. You know, that's that pay for itself. You know, we'll have the suppressor mag that'll be coming up pretty soon too. So okay. members will have first dibs at that one. Um, we'll have a bunch of different companies coming in that'll be going through why, how, this, that, and the next thing on the suppressors, and then get to go do a little quiet time. <laughs> <laughs> so nice and quiet fuse. <laughs> yeah. Um, just a little, little quiet stuff. Um, so yeah, it's, it, come in, get some information. We want you to get the right thing. Um, mm -hmm. We look at ourselves more of a training facility that does sell guns and you can't shoot guns here. Um, but we offer a lot of stuff. Uh, perfect example, Monday, we've got the free teachers clinic. Um, That's it's on awesome. trauma. So it's, it's what happens when there's a trauma in the classroom. Um, and how do you deal with that? What are the proper steps? When do you do this? When do you do that? When is this a bad thing? When That's is awesome. This a bad thing? Um, and so it's something that, like we were talking about, I think it was before you got here, it's a $200 class that we teach to everyone, uh, and it is available to everyone. This one, however, is being slightly twisted and, and I don't twisted, tweaked to be more teacher specific, and we are doing it for teachers for free. So that is awesome. Teachers come in, they take the class for free. We've run this a, a number of different times, so they get it for free. But it's it's not a free class. It's a it's a paid class mm -hmm. that we're giving to you for free to be a teacher because we believe that ultimately teachers keep our most kids, of us man. here have kids. Yeah. So we would like to have those teachers have the right knowledge to make the right choices when there's a situation. And it's it not a, just shootings. It's you know, broken legs, compound fractures, that sort of thing. What do you do in those situations? Um, we have that earthquakes, is, we have fire drills. It's a fact. Teachers have your children more time during the week than you do. Yeah. So I would love for a teacher to have that knowledge. Yeah. So that she can be able to, you know, help my child just in case or anybody else's child, God forbid, something happen. Mm -hmm. So that is awesome. Yeah. And so we, we try to help out. Try and, try and give back. Um, Y'all are really great to us, so it's the least that we can do is, is take care of our members, take care of our supporters. Again, we uh, we just want people to be more proficient. Mm -hmm. um, you have to be. Come in. It, it, we, we were joking around, and, and you know these gangbangers that are out there just willy nilly spraying and praying. Um, you know, like just in the past week, we've got one woman that was shot and stabbed by two quote friends. <sighs> Um, now, there's some smoking of PCP, so I'm not sure how much of any of that is, is like, who knows, but clearly there's, there, there's one there, there's uh, three people shot on Washington Avenue um, by some people behind a car, two of them were in a car, one of them was in a nearby, uh, it was like an English living venue, so she's inside her house and is shot by a stray bullet. Because people aren't, they're not even reckless and ir ir in what irresponsible. To do. Exactly. Um, you know, we're not even trying to, like, obviously they're doing bad things anyway, but if they're doing bad things and they're hitting what they're intending to hit, that's one thing. We, we, have, we have murder in that one. Right. Now, it's the, it's the indiscriminate. You know, we've had like something ridiculous, like 12 kids in the past two months that have been shot. I mean, these are kids, four-year-olds, six-year-olds, 12-year-olds. Like, that's serious problem there. And they didn't do anything that could have possibly warranted them to be shot. No. By, by somebody else. Now, we're not talking about whether this guy was right in doing any shooting at anybody, but, you know, I think it would curb a lot of that very quickly if there was some proficiency. Mm -hmm. And you take this Dallas shooter, I mean... It, it's pretty clear that when you have somebody that's a good guy with a gun that is able to immediately take action, it stops very quickly. Yes. Um, there was nobody harmed in that with the exception of the shooter. There's a couple of broken windows from mm -hmm. his errant firing of whatever he was trying to shoot at or to. Um, clearly, from some of the still pictures we've seen, not a, a proficient individual. 
Um, so to have somebody who's proficient that's able to take action on that guy quickly and dispatch that threat and neutralize that threat to a point where it's no longer a threat very quickly, you know, those guys are responsible, like you were pointing out, responsible mm -hmm. for every round that left their, their firearms. And clearly they had some proficiency there. Um, so good on you Dallas guys in, in taking care of that problem very quickly and keeping it to only one being Kudos. affected, shall we say. Um, so it's kind of one of them things, it's just come out and shoot. Uh, if you don't feel like you're doing it as good as you think you should be, or as you think you could be, ask questions, sign up for classes. We do everything from private lessons where it's uh -huh. just two people and go, okay, well, what are your questions? Well, I don't know how, what a gun is. Fantastic, let's start from the basics. Or yeah. I have this, this, and this that I feel pretty comfortable with, but this is a thing that I don't know. I went back to the basics and just took a basic handgun course and from there build on top of that, you know, just that way I knew I had all the basic mechanics covered and then you just build on it. Yeah. It's just that simple. I thought I could shoot pretty good and I, I think I can, but it does not hurt to no. go back to square one and work your way up. Um, one of the real important things back to uh, Sam was mentioning about Mr. Cox being here. There's so many people that once you buy the firearm, don't even know what kind of rounds to buy for it. Yeah. You know, it's, there's a personal defense round, and then there's a training round. And I've had people call me up and say, hey, you know, I bought this firearm. You know, it's legal and everything. Uh, I'm ready to go to the range. Okay, you got target ammunition, right? Huh? <laughs> the simple, the simplest little things yeah. that you know we laugh at it, but there are other people that have no clue. Yeah. So that's why you know another great thing about coming here, or dealing with other people in the community that are doing the right thing, can say, hey, you know, <laughs> when you go to the range, you take this round, but when you're using your, you know exercising your constitutional right, then you really need to be carrying this round. Yeah. And it takes somebody, you know, to want to learn or be around people that are doing things the right way to help you. And this is a great place, again, to come here and learn that. Yeah. And there's no shame in it, you know. There's it's, it's, differences you're, and you're it's okay being to ask educated. questions. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay to ask questions. It's okay not to have all the answers. Um, Nobody has all the answers. No. But, <laughs> well, Sam does. No, oh, they're millennials. But when you put yourself in a situation to be in a good environment around good people, your outcome can only be good, I think. At least it, 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 it increases your chances of yeah, good things. it does. Yeah, if, if for nothing else, uh, being around good people, around doing good things, mm -hmm. it, it has a tendency to wear it off. It does. And so it, it brings you back into come out it, I mean and once you've taken one of our classes you can always take that class again for free that is correct um, so if, if you space. don't feel like you're, you're comfy with having gone through the basic pistol and you want to take it again take it again we've had guys that have gone all the way through a lot of those and then rolled all the way back and then retaken all three of them again mm -hmm. uh, for like defensive pistol shotgun carbine um, just because it, it's a value for them to be able to do that you never um, stop learning and you want to make sure, you know, this is a skill and you don't want to get rusty. Mm -hmm. So you have to constantly exercise it, which is one of the reasons why I'm constantly here. Yeah. It's, you know, you never know what might happen. Right. But at least, God willing, I'm proficient to do what I need to do. Yeah. And that's that. And that's why we need to get you into some of these matches. <laughs> <laughs> shooting matches, I'm a big fan of, of shooting matches because it's every match, every stage is different. Mm -hmm. So it's constantly a new thing. It's constantly testing your abilities and your, you know, you may be shooting around a corner one day, you may be shooting underneath something, um, you know, moving around uh, and navigating through, you got to think. Um, it's one of the more the last two gun matches we had a target that if you didn't go all the way down and hit that bowling pin target, you're missing out and you're going to get a five second penalty mm. for not shooting it. 
and you had guys missing it because it is out of the way. So if you're not thinking ahead of time right. and going all the way through those steps, you're missing that. So uh, T Max, big one, he says, when a buzzer goes off, a little poop comes out, and so does your plant. And that's exactly <laughs> what happens. When the poop hits the fan, whatever you plan is going to fall by the wayside. And you are going to be left with your, your your lowest denominator. Right. If you're a guy that shoots once and goes, I'm good. I bought my pistol. I got my gun. I have my rounds. I'm all right. I'm, I'm good. No. Something happens, you're going to start curling up in a ball and forget entirely that you have a pistol on you because you haven't trained, you haven't gotten used to that, or you're going to pull that out and you're going to go, oh! Right. And, you know, target focus. You're going to be looking at the target. You're not going to be looking at your sights. Mm -hmm. If you're not proficient with that firearm, who knows where that thing's going to be pointing. And your, your hands are going to be shaking so much that you're going to be all over the place. Competition, while the skills that make you a good competition shooter um, don't necessarily translate directly into situations that may present themselves on the other end I mean having a thought process and being able to plan out and being able to execute a plan so executing is totally while different. under the pressure of a timer is good mm -hmm. so when that pressure happens and it's not a timer it's a situation that you have absolutely no idea what's going on you can quickly formulate some plan and be able to stick mm -hmm. to some plan because you thought about well if this situation were to present itself if i'm in a you know grocery store and right. something starts happening what, what what should i do i'm in this hallway between you know two racks of of totally different chips. situation what are you going to do it's going to be a different situation there than it is if i'm in a parking lot mm -hmm. um, where i've got some cover and concealment that I can get behind cars. I can get, where do you get behind what car? Right. What's your best position? What is your, windows don't do a whole lot for stopping rounds. No, Doors don't, don't do a whole lot for stopping rounds. No, they don't. Trunks don't, like. Absolutely. Those are thin trunk. pieces of metal. Exactly. A lot of them nowadays are plastics, polymers, carbon fibers. Like, those don't do a whole lot for stopping rounds. Nope. Engine blocks do a pretty good job. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of these engine blocks are very small. They only take up a very small portion of that hood there, that underhood area. So it, it, it takes a mindset beforehand to, to be able to, at that point, know am I proficient in a 30 yard shot? Mm -hmm. I have a pistol. Uh, most of our pistols that we carry for a concealed carry thing are gonna be very small pistols. Um, can you hit something from 30 yards away and hit that where you wanna hit that? So if we're gonna take a shot at center mast. We're going to take a shot at a head. Can you hit that from 30 yards? You better train for that. 50 yards. Do you know what 50 yards looks like? So come in, shoot, get proficient. Mm -hmm. um, learn what it is, where your gun's going to hit when you're at 5 yards, 20 yards, 25 yards. Um, do you know what to do when you're doing whatever it is that you're doing? And we got wine drink going on. So, come in and check it out. You need to, you owe it to yourself. Um, I swear by this place. So I don't know what that means to uh, many people, but to a lot of people I know that, you know, when I say put my stamp on something, it's usually golden. This is a great place to learn. No pressure, no obligations. They're here to help you if you need it, and they will make sure they point you in the right direction. Yeah, well said, well said. Um, yeah, anything? I thought it was Rob Schulte because he had just commented on here, but nobody's seen him. What's he know. saying? Do we have any comments? Uh, so, Workman said he wants a rant and that the buzzer instantly cleans out your brain cells. Yes. Mm -hmm. And he wants a rant? Or? Yes. Schulte said, Chris! Hi, Schulte. Take me home, West Virginia. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> I'm. I'm not even sure what that means. But isn't Schulte on his way to DC? Is he with Bill? I think so. I have no idea. If so, that means Phil's got a comment on here, so he yell at us. I know Phil's, do Phil's off doing, doing fun stuff. I just got a bunch of pictures from Phil doing some things. That... Matt Olson's on here now. 
Hey, man, how you doing? The guy who shoots turkeys in the face. Yes. Makes Sam very upset because he... We're not talking about it. He got two turkeys this year. We're not talking about it. Yes. (laughs) Schultz is in D.C. Yeah, so they're... Bill and Schulte are off playing and they're doing cool things and oh, they're hopefully going to have fun stuff when they come back and some good info and you see some some things we may be doing or planning in the future. So. I was about to say it must be something regarding the future here. You guys are always up to something. Always, <laughs> always. I'm telling you, John, John has a list of about yay long that he's told us. And so as soon as you like check one box off and you're like, all right, cool, we got that done, he's like, he thought of something there's else. Thing. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, okay. And he's like, well, then, then there's this other thing. And then there's, there's this, that you're good for right now. And it's like, <laughs> so Constantly he leaves us with like something. a list of like, okay, here's enough stuff that you guys can really get enough for everybody to be focused on. But man, that man's mind is constantly coming up with what are other ways that we can advance and make things better. Bless you. Bless you. <laughs> it's, I know it hurts, but it's so funny watching it. I don't. Wow. Yeah. I don't know. It hurts her, I but. I had my nose broken six times and had a DV and septum. So when she sneezes, Ouch. it's some weird, like, sounds that come out, and it sounds funny, but then she's in pain. So you don't really want to laugh, but sometimes you can't help it. And then sometimes she puts a, twists herself up into positions, like in, in our office earlier. She's like backwards on this chair, like twisted up into a ball, and I couldn't help it. I just had to laugh. It was funny. So cute. <laughs> <laughs> wow. What else is on there? Anything uh, else? Nothing. Nothing? No, no fun? Schulte's being Schulte, so we're just going to blatantly ignore that. Got it, got it. And Dave Workman's been talking to himself. How many, any dad jokes that we should uh, share? Make sure somebody. When you guys were talking up. about scopes, he said we might have to scope them out. <laughs> it's a little stretch on He's the a, joke there. It's a little quiet today. Why? I guess he hates us. Uh oh. He just hate, he did, he, Maybe he doesn't he's mad hate Phil's us. Not here. Maybe that's it. That he doesn't have Phil to go he's back and. But if I sneeze now. Well, if you guys caught it on video or audio, it was different. I sound like a mouse. I know. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. It's like a muffled mouse. Like a My mouse. system literally makes an S. I've never heard you sneeze until today. It hurts. It, it's, yeah. Usually it's followed by a large amount of profanity. And you'd think that it would just like whistle with all the like <laughs> extra metal that's in her, her nose and stuff, you'd think it would just come out like with a whistle. Wow. Man, I appreciate you letting me come in. Hey, no problem, man. I appreciate you coming in, bud. This was awesome. Yeah. Um, One thing on the hero side of things. Good job, St. Louis sports fans. Woo! Um, Blues won the Stanley Cup. Was it 52 years, I think? Um, See? And this entire state seemed to explode in a sea of blue, which being a Cardinals fan, like, it's normally yeah, was, a sea of red in this I was at a game last night, matter of fact. But it was a sea of blue. It and was. It was in, like, there's some estimates that go everywhere from 400,000 up to a million that were downtown. And from people that I know that were there said that within two hours of everybody kind of dissipating, the place was clean. That's great. Like, that's good great. On you see, it looks like, like that's no great. Major fights. That's there great. Was, like, that I'm is sure awesome. There was probably a you know a squabble or two, but but that was awesome. It was squashed um, very quickly. I mean, there was no no arrests, no. That's awesome. Anything crazy, and boy, and there's Brett Hall. Wow. That man was definitely having a good time. Mm-hmm. Um, so good on you, St. Louis. We had game seven was a set a new record on TV. Um, Nine million viewers. I was about to say the attendance um, and the views had to have been Yeah, it was the highest since 94 when they started looking at it. And uh, according to NBC Sports PR, the market's 41.8 rating exceeded the viewership of the 2019 Super Bowl wow. by almost two points. 
That's awesome. And again, no fights, no rests. Everybody was peaceful. Everybody was happy. Everybody was but, celebrating together. Mm -hmm. And man. But you got to give it to the Blues to go from last place. Last place. Last place. Getting basically laughed at by a lot of teams. All the way in, so and now, all the way up to. Now the joke's on you. <laughs> yeah, all the way up to the end. Like, you wow. had a lot of media attention talking about how the Bruins were going to just absolutely whoop up on the Blues. Right. But the Blues absolutely never, ever, ever gave up. And no, they did. They continued to fight and pull together as a team. And wow, I mean. And we have the cup now. We have the cup. We have the cup. So. Way to go, Blues. Yeah, yeah. So good on you, St. Louis. As always, great town. Great people here. You have so. no questions. Nobody likes you. Nobody likes me. Nobody has questions. It's just fine. They're busy laughing at my sneakers. Well, I mean, we should, <laughs> we should make that into like a gift. <laughs> you could like send that to somebody. It's like a, a screw you sneeze or something. So if we have nothing else, I guess we're going to take it was. off. Again, Sid, I want to thank you for coming oh, on. Thank you, um, man. I appreciate thank you it. you saying all the nice things. I'll have the check for you over there. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> nah, I meant that. No, Sid's nice. just one of our good, you know, our, our good customers. Um, and I'd like to say he's a, he's a friend of the range um, because it is truly a friendship that mm -hmm. we all enjoy. Um, great conversation time and time again. Um, we really appreciate how many people you do send in to us um, that may be looking for a place. So we're a place that you can call home. Um, I can't say everybody will know your name. You know, we're not quite at that, uh, that bar status of a certain bar that <laughs> we won't really talk terribly about because we just whooped them. Uh, and from being from Boston, I can say that uh, without problems. Um, but we, we, we do, we want you to be more proficient, we want you to be more educated, we want you to be more knowledgeable. We want you to come here because you would like to buy something, not because we sold you something. Um, so come in, get on. some info. We, we, we like to give you info, we like to get you smarter, get you more knowledgeable, that way you make better decisions. And we have more good guys with guns running around stopping these bad guys with guns. Um, let's get St. Louis cleaned up. Yeah. We got some pockets, God. and they are pockets. They are pockets. They are small pockets, but we have some pockets that really. You have people that have lived there for many, many years that are scared to go outside, and that should not be. Um, should not be happening. I say a couple of bad apples now will ruin a whole bunch. And yeah, that's unfortunately what's happened in a lot of neighborhoods. Yeah. It's just a couple of bad apples. And we got cities. some people that are speaking out on it. We got some people we should be listening to. Um, that we should be helping out because this is a great town and mm -hmm. things like the blues um, that experience should should show that it is not a, a not a people problem in general it is a people problem in specific instances where there are issues that need to be resolved so let's uh let's make a change for the better absolutely so i think we're all for today you guys have fun are you ready